Welcome back to Taxes Made Simple, guys. Today we are talking real estate stuff. I am so happy to talk real estate because I personally like real estate conversation more than I like business conversation, more than I like talking about W-2 stuff. And part of the reason why I like real estate is because of this magic deduction called depreciation. I view depreciation as the king of all deductions. I think it's the best deduction out of everything I've read in the tax code. And if you learn how to unlock the power of depreciation, you have the ability to leverage earning income, but paying 0% in taxes. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to understand is that depreciation is a tax incentive. It's given to you by the government. And what it is, it's the recovery of the cost for purchasing your own rental property. Yeah, that's correct. You get a deduction when you decide to place your rental property into rental purpose. No guys, the government isn't your best friend, but they are trying to help you. And how they're trying to help you is by giving you a tax incentive. Wow, look at this. Do you know what this means? Depreciation is probably the best tax incentive because you're partnering with the government when you decide to place your rental property into business purpose. Let's talk about it. So, in order to understand depreciation, we first have to understand useful life and asset class. When you are placing a property in business, that means that everything inside of that property becomes business property, which means the washer, the dryer, the stove, the countertops, the flooring, the windows, the drywall, all become business property that you get to take a write-off for. But before you take a write-off for it, you have to understand that each item inside of your property has a useful life. Let me give you an example. Most of the time when you're moving into a new property, um, whether you're renting or you're getting ready to buy a home, the property's paint is brand new. And part of the reason why is because anytime a property is being turned over where there's going to be new tenants coming in, the property manager is going to want to come in and clean out that property, but mainly they're going to want to repaint that property so it looks relatively new. Well, paint is an expense because typically when you're living in a rental property, paint only lasts about one year. Oh, really? So the IRS states that if you're going to repaint your property, that you're only able to write it off over the course of one year, not five, six, seven, or eight years because it only lasts one year. So the useful life concept is extremely important to understand as it pertains to depreciation because depreciation is only on items that have useful life longer than one year. So let's go over that. Talking about washers and dryers, these types of items typically last about five to seven years. They're appliances. So what that means is based on the cost associated with these items, they are being depreciated the value taken over the course of time on your tax returns for either five or seven years. This is its useful life deduction. Now, one of the ways in which depreciating real estate can be very easy is rather than getting the cost associated with every single nut, bolt, and screw associated with your building, the building can be written off straight line over the course of 27 and a half years if it's a residential property. What that means is, is rather than having a property assessor come to the property to categorize every single expense as depreciable items, you can write off the entire property straight line over the course of 27 and a half years. Let's go for an example. Let's say that we decided to buy a rental property and let's say the rental property we purchased is $1.5 million. Guys, I'm using a bigger example so it's easier for us to do the math. Depreciation states that we can only deduct the building. So the land that we purchased is not considered depreciable. So let's get a cost associated with the land. Let's say in this example, the property we purchased, that's 1.5 million. Let's say $500,000 of the 1.5 million is the land. And let's say the other 1 million is the building structure. Okay, so we have 500,000, that's the land. 
and we have one million, that's the building structure. The land is not depreciable, so we'll forget about that, okay? So now we have this one million that we get to take in a write-off over the course of 27 and a half years. So if we do a quick little calculation on our calculator and divide one million divided by 27 and a half, that's gonna give us a depreciation write-off of $36,363 every single year for 27 and a half years. This is considered straight line depreciation. And most all rental properties, especially rental properties placed in service after 1987, they're being depreciated on this straight line depreciation schedule. So the flooring, the lighting, the appliances, the nuts, the bolts, and the screws inside of your property, they're all being written off over the course of 27 and a half years, even though maybe not all of those items last 27 and a half years. Oh, well, never mind. But to make it easier for yourself, the government gave you straight line depreciation as a method so it's easier to take your depreciation. Now, you might be thinking, Carlton, does it make sense for me to write off all of my items over the course of 27 and a half years? Or would it make more sense for me to try to accelerate some of the items that I know do not last 27 and a half years? For example, washers and dryers, nuts, bolts, and screws, windows, and the blinds do not last 27 and a half years, but they're being written off over the course of 27 and a half years, straight line depreciation. And your CPA, unless you've done a cost segregation study with him, which is a tax strategy, you are writing off all of your items in your property over the course of 27 and a half years straight line. So let's talk about how we can possibly accelerate depreciation and whether or not it makes sense to do so. Depreciation acceleration. Cost segregation study is a form of accelerated depreciation, but really what it is, is you're just recategorizing the items inside of your property and placing them into its each depreciable asset class. There's various asset classes. There's a three-year asset class, a five-year asset class, a seven, 10, 15, 27 and a half, and 39-year asset class. But when you're trying to depreciate some of the components in your property out of the 27 and a half year bucket, typically you're moving items into the five year bucket class and the seven year asset class, because this is where a lot of those items fall. Okay. When we're doing a cost segregation study, we've segregated all the components and we place them into their individual asset classes so we can write them off in a quicker amount of time. By having more depreciation on our tax return, we are able to reduce the rental income that we are subject to from our tenant. So if we have rental income of $60,000 from our property that we purchased, but now that we've done a cost segregation study and we have depreciation of $70,000, we are in a place where we have no taxable income on the rental property that we purchased all because of this magic depreciation that we receive from the government. But the real key about understanding depreciation is knowing the difference between straight line depreciation and accelerated depreciation. Because if you're taking straight line depreciation, which is a good thing, you may still be subject to taxable income on your rental property because the rent may exceed the depreciation. And in this event, we pay taxes. But in order to avoid taxes, we can come up with strategies, such as the cost segregation study to accelerate depreciation, recategorize the expenses associated with our property, and now we might have a bigger depreciation deduction on the tax return. Hey, that's pretty good. Because there's always downsides to anything we do. The downside to accelerating depreciation is in the event that we decide to sell our property, we are going to pay taxes on the amount of money that we accelerated. And the downside of the amount of money that is accelerated is that money is subject to normal income tax rates. So it's no different than receiving a paycheck from your employer. You're going to pay federal taxes and state taxes based on your taxable income. Any amount that you chose not to accelerate, but you still took depreciation on, this amount you are still gonna pay taxes on. This is called recapture depreciation gain. Any amount that you did not accelerate on your rental property, but that you still took depreciation on, 
You are going to pay taxes on this depreciation, but it's going to be subject to a max 25%. This is called unrecaptured depreciation, and you're subject to 25% taxes on this income, and this is also a version of capital gains. Any amount of gain outside of the depreciation that you receive is subject to capital gains tax rates based on the duration of you owning that property. So you might hear all the time, capital gains, capital gains, 21%. But you have to realize that if you're taking depreciation, you're not just paying capital gains, you're also paying unrecaptured depreciation tax and you're subject to income tax on any accelerated depreciation. So this is super important to understand and also something that most CPAs aren't teaching their real estate investors in a tax appointment. Well, in order for us to make sure that we're never in a position where we're compromising our wealth and never in a position where we're hurting ourselves as we're real estate investing, we have to decide whether or not we're going to work with just a tax preparer or a tax strategist that can help us navigate the tax code throughout the year. Okay. Whatever you say. Chances are you're probably going to buy more than one investment property. And chances are you may need cost segregation studies to reduce your taxes so you can continue to buy investment properties. But if your strategy is to eventually sell, then you need to have strategies in place so you're avoiding the capital gains and the unrecaptured depreciation tax. So what we are insisting that you do is take the time to meet with a tax strategist, figure out what is the best strategies for you to leverage, not only right now with where you're at with your real estate portfolio, but later down the road so you're never putting yourself in a position where you're compromising your wealth. My name is Carlton Dennis, and if you love this video on depreciation, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be creating more YouTube videos around real estate. And go ahead and like this video so we can work on this YouTube algorithm thing and get more videos like this out. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.